In this video, we're going to take a look at the traffic control features on a Synology router. As devices in our home become more connected, our broadband connection may start to feel the strain from so many devices vying for ever increasing amounts of bandwidth. Traffic control allows you to prioritize and control the amount of bandwidth that devices connected to your network have. So if you start to experience issues streaming videos on Netflix because somebody else in the house is torrenting large files, Enabling traffic control on your Synology router is one method to alleviate bandwidth issues. As traffic control is about managing your existing bandwidth, before we enable traffic control, we need to find out how much bandwidth we actually have. I'm using an app, but any online broadband speed checking tool should provide us with enough information about our upload and download speeds. Using a broadband speed checking tool, we need to take three readings and calculate the average broadband speed. The broadband connection we're using here has a download speed of 4,292 kilobits per second with an upload speed of 756 kilobits per second. According to Ofcom, this is about average for a UK house in 2017. You may have noticed that I'm measuring in kilobits per second rather than megabits per second. This is because the Synology router defaults to kilobits rather than megabits. So if like me, your maths is not great, working in kilobits on the router should be a little bit easier. So let's return to the SRM and open up the network center. From within the network center, we need to select traffic control. You can see under the general tab that we have three devices connected to our network. We have the computer that I'm currently working from, we have an Apple TV and we have an iPhone. As devices are added to your network, the list will become longer. You will find that certain devices do not correctly display their names. If this happens, you can edit the name of the device by clicking on it. In the device name field, simply update the device name to something more meaningful to you. As a MAC address is unique, compare the MAC address on your device with the MAC address listed here. This will help confirm that you've correctly labeled your device. Finally, you can choose a custom image to help you identify a device when viewed in the general tab of traffic control. We will be applying traffic control to the Apple TV, but before we do, let's take a look at the individual options available for each device. Beamforming will more narrowly focus the Wi-Fi signal to a device. This will improve signal strength and data transfer speeds, but is offset by reducing the Wi-Fi signal's range. It should be noted that beamforming will only work with devices capable of using 802.11n and 802.11ac Wi-Fi standards. The banning option when selected prevents a device from connecting to your network. Next we have custom speed and high priority. But as custom speed and high priority are not available until after you've enabled traffic control, Let's now take a look at setting up traffic control. If we now select the advanced tab, we are prompted to enable traffic control. To enable traffic control, we need to place a tick in the tick box. Next, we need to select the measuring values. I'm going to stick with kilobits per second. We can now enter our average internet upload broadband speed, which in my case is 763 kilobits per second. With the upload speed entered, we can now insert the internet download speed, which is 4,338 kilobits per second. By selecting the OK button, we set the broadband speed parameters that the traffic control will use. With the advanced option now activated, you can see that we have guaranteed and maximum columns. The guaranteed column fixes the outgoing traffic for a device to ensure that there is sufficient bandwidth. The maximum column is set to how much bandwidth a device can utilize if there is sufficient spare bandwidth on the network. Let's try and add a device to traffic control. The first option allows us to choose which device we want to add a device rule for. In this example, I'm going to use the Apple TV. We can verify that we've selected the correct device by checking the MAC address. Then we simply need to select the guaranteed and maximum upload and download speeds that we want the Apple TV to have. 
As I wanted to ensure that the Apple TV streams Netflix seamlessly, I checked on the Netflix website the minimum bandwidth specification for HD streaming. So I'm setting the guaranteed upload bandwidth to 120 kilobits per second. The guaranteed download bandwidth has been set to 625 kilobits per second. The maximum upload bandwidth has been set to 150 kilobits per second. And the maximum download bandwidth has been set to 800 kilobits per second. If needed, you can use the Create App rule to set traffic control for specific services on a device, for example, file sharing. However, for the Apple TV, this is not necessary, so I'm simply going to click Cancel. With our parameters set, we now need to click OK. The Apple TV, with its traffic control parameters, is now added to a list under the Advanced tab. To finalise the new bandwidth rule that we've created for the Apple TV, we now need to click Apply. Returning to the list under the General tab, we can see that the Apple TV has now been enabled with custom speed. The final option that we need to review is the high priority setting. This allows three devices on your network to be given higher priority when sending and receiving data. By giving the Apple TV higher priority over data than other devices, the Apple TV should be able to stream video more smoothly. So let's recap. We've looked at the options for traffic control, We've reviewed beamforming, banning, custom speed and high priority. We've looked at how you can edit the details for devices on your network and how you can create rules to control the guaranteed and the maximum bandwidth for a specific device.